Hello and welcome to Atlantic Conversations. I'm Fanula Sweeney. The Atlantic Fellowship Programme works with a diverse community of leaders around the world with a common commitment to fairer, healthier, more inclusive societies. Through its seven programmes focused on equity and healthcare, socio-economic equity and racial equity, the Atlantic Fellowships offer those leaders an opportunity to gain new perspectives and new colleagues while strengthening their confidence in their work for change. In each podcast, I'll be speaking to an Atlantic Fellow about their work and ambitions for a more just world. For this series, I travelled to Sao Paulo, Brazil, for the Global Brain Health Institute Annual Conference, where I caught up with a number of Atlantic Fellows. Today, I'm joined by Barbara costa Baber, an Atlantic Fellow for Equity and Brain Health. Barbara works as a speech and language therapist at the Federal University of Health Sciences of Porto Alegre, Brazil, where she is a professor. I asked her to tell me about her work. I work especially with communication disorders in people that have some neurological disorder, but I work more with dementia and other types of neurological disorders in adults and elderly population. And you specifically focus on speech. Yes. How is speech affected with someone with dementia? Dementia may present with communication disorders, and these communication disorders might be a little different depending on the type of dementia and also the severity. But in general, they present with anomia, that is a difficulty to name things, to remember names of people. This is a very frequent presentation of the language disorders. They also may present with comprehension, understanding problems, also motor speech problems, depending on the type of dementia. These are the most frequent language symptoms in people with dementia. Is speech therapy for people with dementia common in Brazil? It's not so common. We have a more strong tradition of working with people that had a stroke. And usually we don't receive deep and good training to work on dementia. So you're in some ways, would it be fair to say, a pioneer in your field here? Yes, and we are trying with my GBHI project to improve the training of these professionals and help them to be more prepared to work on dementia. Tell me how that works in terms of your project with GBHI. The aim of the project is to improve the training of these professionals here. In Brazil. In Brazil. We have about 40,000 speech and language therapists in the whole country. And GBHI is supporting this project because I got grant funding from GBHI and Alzheimer's Association. The project has many different steps. So the first step was curricula analysis in the undergraduate courses in Brazil. We look at the documents that tell which courses each undergraduate course offer for speech therapists. And we saw if they were offering courses on dementia or neuropsychology of communication disorders. And uh, so far, we concluded that only 12% of all the Brazilian universities are offering up training in neuropsychology, for example. We believe that is not enough, and we should advocate for more teaching in this field to prepare more these professionals. So what's the next step? The next step is a national survey to do a diagnosis of this situation. With this survey, we want to know the level of knowledge and awareness of speech and language therapists on dementia. Also to say what kind of training they received, if they received it or not, if they receive patients in their services or not, these kind of questions. Is it difficult to try and compile a survey of all the speech and language therapists in Brazil? It is very difficult. We need to have a collaboration of many institutions to spread the survey and to have contact, especially with the states in north of Brazil. We have a lot of participants from south, but few of them are from north. The most difficult part is to get more participants from the other parts of Brazil. Are you confident that you will be able to get enough participants to do a good study? Yes, I am, because we saw this difficulty and we planned some new strategies. We have already about 200 participants, but they are most from south, and the next months we'll focus to get more participants from the other parts of Brazil. 
assuming all goes well on that front and you get all the participants you need and get all their answers, what will you do with the research when you're able to analyze it? We hope to see in which areas these professionals have more difficulty and also what they suggest as actions to improve their training. There is a part of the survey where we ask about this and uh, we will consider their suggestions to develop an action plan. For example, with the preliminary results, we can see that they suggest a lot to have guidelines or recommendation papers about their role in dementia. We are starting to work on that. We got experts, a panel to start to write this paper. And we can see that so far, because we didn't finish the survey, they suggested some improvements in the undergraduate courses and to improve the offer of short courses for these professionals. So probably the next step will be that way. And the ultimate objective of all of this is to have what in Brazil? is to have professionals better prepared to intervene in dementia. Because in Brazil, most of the speech and language therapists work in the public health system. They are in contact with the most vulnerable population. So people that don't have conditions to pay for a health insurance and to pay to a private speech and language therapist. We believe that they are very important. They are key to reduce the impact of dementia in this population. So we hope that in the next years, we will help to reduce the impact of the communication disorders in people with dementia. What inspired you or motivated you to become interested in academia and dementia? Specifically on dementia, what made me become interested in this field was my personal history. I had a person with dementia in my family and I started to be very interested in understanding why this was happening, what difficulties would come in the next stage of dementia. I started to study that. I started my PhD on that field. And I think the possibility of helping to improve people's quality of life was also something that motivated me. Why did you want to do the fellowship in equity and brain health at the Global Brain Health Institute? I always wanted to work in something that was very significant and that could change people's lives. But at the same time, I knew that I needed some training and preparation because to do something big, we have to be a leader in the field. When I heard about the Global Brain Health Institute, I thought it would be a nice opportunity to get more skills on other fields that I didn't have and to learn more about dementia and be prepared to do a bigger project in Brazil. So I applied to the GBHI fellowship and I was selected. Do you feel that you got those skills that you needed that were necessary for you to do the work you're now doing in Brazil? Yeah, I improved a lot of skills that I didn't have before, but I'm aware that I need to improve more. So in this way, GBHI continues to help me also, the contact with the other fellows, we have the opportunity to learn a lot with the other fellows that have more experience in other fields. You're speaking, of course, just after the annual GBHI Alzheimer's Association Satellite Symposium in Sao Paulo yes. here in Brazil. What does that mean for you to meet maybe 67, 68 other fellows from the Global Brain Health Institute from around the world, but particularly in South America? It's an amazing opportunity because we can exchange knowledge so they can see our reality here in South America, but uh, they also share their experiences with us and we can see what experiences are useful to apply in our population, in our scenario. Many fellows work in very different fields than I, for example. I can learn about politics, about social aspects of dementia and arts, that was something that I didn't receive any education on or training on that. This is, I think, the most useful thing that GBHI offers to us. I got the sense at this conference that there is a real movement now happening across South America in terms of the treatment, uh, diagnosis of dementia and dementia prevention. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's right? Yeah, I think so. We have a lot of difficulties here. For example, the economical situation, the inequality is bigger than in Europe and USA. But people that work on dementia are getting closer and we are 
making some collaborations that are very promising for the next years. One example is the Latin America Consortium. That's a group of researchers from many countries of Latin America that are starting to work together and plan some projects for the future. And I think this will be a nice opportunity to do something good to our countries. Of course, being an Atlantic Fellow means you're also part of the wider community of Atlantic Fellows, the seven global programs Mm -hmm. across the world. Have you had time to consider how being a member of that community might both impact your work or also the work that other Fellows are doing? Yes, we are just at the beginning of the establishment of this community and we can interact with Fellows from all the world, so from Asia, South Africa, Australia, it gives a broader sense of a community more than GBHI because GBHI is already a community, but Atlantic Fellows give us the opportunity to see that the community is much bigger than we first thought. Also, we share a lot of experiences. A final question for you, what is your ambition for your project with GBHI that's also co-funded by Alzheimer's Association? What do you want to see be the situation for people in Brazil with dementia and their access to speech therapy? I hope that in the next years we can have speech and language therapies in remote areas, for example, of Brazil, receiving patients with dementia and being able to help to diagnose, working together with the GPs and the neurologists and also doing some treatment that might be very different according to the type or stage of dementia. I hope that they are able to help patients, but also the caregivers, because we know that people that are in late stage of dementia, sometimes they are not able to engage in a therapy, but we can do a lot with the caregivers. We can train them to use communication strategies that will help to reduce, for example, depression, self-isolation, also to reduce the psychological burden of these caregivers. So I hope that in about, for example, 10 years, we can see this happening in our public health system. Barbara, thank you very much indeed, and good luck with your project. Thank you very much. That was Barbara costa Beber, Atlantic Fellow for Equity and Brain Health. For more information, you can visit www.atlanticfellows.org. I'm Fanula Sweeney, and you've been listening to the Atlantic Conversations podcast.